Let's take a look at a door entry system. This is a system where when you go up to a block of flats, you have a call panel and it's got the speaker microphone in it and you press the desired flat button and after a time, if they answer, if they pick up their phone, they can talk to you uh, with a wee loudspeaker locally and them using their phone. And if you're the right person, they can push this button and it unlocks the door for you to enter. So the system is actually very straightforward. It uses a bus. So I'll show you this. I shall zoom down that just a tiny little bit. So this is the main door unit. It's got the loudspeaker and the microphone plus all the buttons. It's a very modular system. You've got the transformer power supply, you've got this module, and then you've got as many buttons as are needed and then as many phones as are needed. So here's the transformer come in. It's the mains on that side. We've got 12 volts AC on that side, although this unit can also work on DC. And it goes to the uh, main door unit initially. Plus there's a couple of things common to the lock and the uh, buttons. And from there, there are three main wires going up to the all the phones, plus a common lock wire. You've got the O, R and T. The O is actually common to one uh, side of the transformer. And uh, it's the one that's when you press buttons in it to unlock, that's what's referenced to that. You've got the R and the T, which are the audio lines. I've not actually reverse engineered this yet, but we shall find out what they're doing. I'd guess one is the audio going up from this unit, from the microphone in this unit, and the other one will be the audio coming down from the microphone in your unit. And when you actually call someone, and you push the button, there is one wire for every single person going up there. It's, although there's the, a common bus of four wires, there is an extra wire for each, every uh, flat. And when you push the button, it uh, powers connection I on this phone, and that's what rings it. However, when uh, they want to actually open the door, it's just a button between the common the zero and the Z or the Z, which goes straight to the lock. So any flat can push the button and it will unlock it. Let's take a look inside the phone. We have one of these systems here. It wasn't installed very well. Very much twisted wires asunder. Maybe that's how they normally install them. I would have thought they'd have used the little gel crimps that the telecommunications industry uses. But this is an interesting system because Bell Systems, who make this, originally started off installing similar equipment and realised that uh, uh, they could do better, and, and they have done better. It's quite a nice system and it's evolved. You can see they're actively designing and evolving because uh, even I've got a couple of these uh, phone units and uh, they've got, well, this is issue number seven. They're on to variation number seven. And it is improving. The, the types of switches they're using are changing. Uh, something that has remained constant in the most recent ones, there's a little microcontroller in here that does the sound. It's the easiest way to do it. Uh, when it, you provide push the button, it provides local rectification, just a single diode power supply. We'll reverse engineer this. And then a microcontroller that makes that sort of doo -doo 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 noise just to actually ring the phone. Uh, there is another connector here, which goes out to the handpiece and all it's got it's got four wires going out uh, two of them the yellow and the green are going to the speaker which is a 40 ohm impedance speaker and the uh, the brown and the white down here are going to the microphone with the white being the negative case of a electric microphone i noticed in another handset i've got that it used a completely different type of microphone and had much less circuitry in here interesting and when you push the button a nice big chunky micro switch is the thing that actually unlocks the door Okay, let's whip this circuit board out and take a look. But I'm going to move to a different location for this just because of logistics at the moment. Uh, and I'll probably look at, at this one. I might make a different video about this one because it's going to be quite a complex subject in its own right. But uh, I'll be back in one moment. When I say one moment later, sometimes that is a long time later. And it is. I've been very busy at work these days. But I've reverse engineered the simplest of these. There's two versions, one that uses a fairly high output microphone, I guess, and a modern one that uses an electric microphone. I shall also reverse engineer the one that uses the electric microphone because uh, it's a bit more complex. They're probably doing that because it's easier to get the electrets. However, this one uses quite a large microphone in its uh, handset. 
So what we have here, we've got the terminals coming on, we've got the main uh, micro switch, which is used to actually unlock the door. It's They've used the micro switch because of its rugged high current capabilities. We've got two distinct sections. We've got the uh, audio section and we've got the ring section. The ring section has a simple power supply. It's got a PIC microcontroller. The reason they've used the PIC microcontroller is simply because it's just the easiest way to create an interesting ringtone. Instead of just a beep, it actually makes a sort of do -do 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 noise. And that's what happens in here. Technically speaking, you could rewrite the software to make any noise you wanted. That has a transistor, and then it's got a link here that can choose high or low volume. We've got the headset, the handset switch, when you put it on, it puts it either on hook or off hook. Hook switch, I suppose, is the best way to call that. And then we have a little bit of extra circuitry around here, which is quite interesting, and a connector that uh, actually connects to the handset with the, a simple microphone and a loudspeaker in it. That's the front of the circuit board. If you want to play along and reverse engineer, that is the back of the circuit board, but to actually reverse so everything correlates. It just makes it easier to reverse engineer. Let's take a look at the schematic. It's quite nice. It's quite interesting. It has the hallmarks of a British design, a traditional, is that pretentious saying? A traditional British design. So we have the I coming in, which is the ring input, and that uh, basically just applies either AC or DC reference to the zero or the O, which is the common zero volt reference for the whole circuit. When you apply uh, a voltage to that, it gets half wave rectified. If it's DC, it will just go straight through the diode. If it's AC, it will be half wave. And this capacitor here, which I think is 220 microfarad, 220 microfarad, uh, charges up, but then by this resistive current limiter uh, and a Zener diode, it creates a five volt supply. I'm guessing it's five volts. I didn't measure that with respect to the positive rail. That means that the PIC microcontroller just sees five volts, but it's referenced to the positive rail simply because it is actually driving this uh, PNP transistor to actually raise the uh, input to the speaker, which is connected to the zero volt rail up to the positive rail. The power supply for the uh, PIC microcontroller has a little decoupling capacitor and it's also got a 1K resistor. The reason for the 1K resistor is just to make sure that when it, you let go of the ringing button, the uh, voltage across this uh, capacitor and indeed this uh, capacitor here drops very quickly to zero to ensure a nice solid reset for the PIC microcontroller. Uh, there's a Zener, there's the main current limiting resistor, the PIC microcontroller, a 1K base resistor to a PNP transistor so that, that when it's ringing is pulling up to the positive rail. The, when it's pulling up to the positive rail, a couple of things happen. When the phone is on the hook, this switch is in the on hook position, and this is also the on hook. I shall write that position there for the uh, loudspeaker. So this is microphone switch and the loudspeaker switch. But when it's on hook, uh, as well as providing audio to the speaker. It also has a little capacitor and resistor to provide a low level signal back to the microphone connection, which is the R, which means that locally downstairs where someone has pushed the call button, it also, they get a very slight doo -doo 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 -doo, and that is actually being generated by the phone they've just called. That's quite interesting. It means that theoretically, if you pressed a couple of buttons out of sync down there, you'd get a double uh, alternating tone. If you press them all, you'd get all the tones at once. Uh, but each one is being generated purely by the phone, which means that when you press the button, you hear that slight uh, noise downstairs. It means you're getting a confirmation that it is actually ringing up on the phone. That's quite nice. The pu pulsing positive goes through this diode here. And then it, if that switch is closed, that's the high volume. It goes straight across up this uh, switch, which is on hook and straight to the speaker and creates this strong ringing sound. It's interesting to note that that speaker also has a diode across it, which means that when it's doing speech, when you've picked it up, uh, I wonder if that's just a very low voltage signal or it's just basically clipping that a little bit. It doesn't really matter. It's just a door entry system. It's not high fidelity. If you flick the switch open, well, it's actually a digital link uh, to go to the low volume. It puts a 100 ohm resistor in series. But also, if you pick the phone up, um, that changes over. The microphone changes over uh, so that it becomes active when the phone is picked up and feeds directly to the R 
input. If you uh, pick it up, the T connection, which is the uh, speaker, the signal back from downstairs, gets coupled to the loudspeaker, but also there is a very high value resistor there from the ringer, which means if someone presses the ring button uh, while you're picking it up, it will make a slight doo -doo 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 in, but it won't be devastatingly loud. It won't be deafeningly loud. That's purely to protect your hearing, I guess. So, you know, putting it up to your, just when someone presses that button, they might even do it deliberately just out of malice. That's what that's for, so you can tell to press the button. And that's fundamentally it. There's not really a lot to say. This is a very simple circuit. The microphone one in the other more modern un units that uses a, shall we say, a, a more sensitive lower output microphone does have other circuitry associated with that. I'm going to have to reverse engineer this, but it seems to derive up a supply from somewhere to bias that microphone and amplify it up. It's got extra components. But as it is, most of the circuitry here is uh, in this unit is to generate the ringtone and uh, then control the volume of the ringtone depending on whether you've got the volume set high or low or whether the handset's picked up. It's very simple. Um, really, when it comes to the crunch, when you pick the handset up, it simply connects the speaker and the microphone down to the common bus lines, down to the unit downstairs. Very neat design. Oh, and the micro switch, when you press the micro switch, it uh, connects the Z, which is a common bus that goes to the control lock, to the zero volt rail, and that just basically activates the lock downstairs. It's a very neat design. It's quite interesting indeed. So I shall be taking a look at the other more modern design that uses the microphone, the electric microphone, and taking a look at the circuitry. And I'll also, and it's going to take a lot more time, be taking a look at the uh, downstairs unit that actually has the local loudspeakers so that the person actually standing at the door can hear you talking and you can hear them. But very interesting. That was quite interesting to take apart.